Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live. Today is Friday, February 21st, 2020. We're in the final hour of the trading day and the final day of the trading week. And this has been a wild week. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate seeing you here each day. I really look forward to it. Um, hope you're all doing well. And boy, are we having an interesting kind of crazy day in the market today and yesterday. So I hope everyone's position sizing correctly, following their rules because it's been quite volatile. All right. Well, currently Dow is down 254 points, 0.87%. The NASDAQ's down 185 points, down 1.9% and the S&P is down 38.64 over 1% as well. So um, listen, I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me okay. I had some issues with YouTube yesterday and I just wanna make sure everyone can hear me. So if you could, I would appreciate if you could say hello or we can hear you. All right. Kamal says ROKU is close to hitting 5%. Yes, it definitely was. It definitely was. I had my little emergency stop ready to go if it had got there. Okay, good. Zach says he can hear me. Good. All right. Well, listen, here is the plan for today, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Secondly, you're going to come back and uh, take a look at my current positions, as difficult as that is today. I talk about when I bought them, why I bought them, how I'm gonna move, manage them moving forward. After that, we are going to uh, take a look at some of your positions and uh, take a look and see how those are doing. After that, i uh, gonna do a few minutes on trader psychology. Very, very important, especially on days like today, everyone, that uh, you follow your plan. Don't let your emotions get amplified. Uh, because over the long run, if you start breaking that plan, you're in, you're in trouble. And uh, so always important to have discipline, follow your rules, follow your plan. And I do like to talk about it each day a little bit. Hopefully, if I talk about it each day, you'll start to internalize it and you'll make it part of your trading. So, all right. Um, after that, uh, I have gone down through my watch list already. Um, I, I'm doing this... Uh, in a new way now just to save more time give us more time to chat and give us more time to take a look at symbols and answer questions so forth so so on uh so i did go through my list I, I when i go down through my list i look for support levels resistance levels i look for um a confluence or a combination of indicators lining up i look at as i look at indicators as groups of buyers and you can dramatically increase the chance of having a profitable trade if you can get in with many groups of buyers instead of just one group of buyer that is why i like to look for a combination or a confluence of indicators um, before making my trades uh, step two i look for good risk reward want to make sure that i have two times the reward at least two times the reward on the upside uh, uh, compared to what i am uh, risking on the downside and number three just want to make sure i do not have too many correlated positions all right so uh then uh if i find something at the end of the day i will go ahead place a trade at the end of the day right before the market closes uh, after the market closes, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. If you'd like me to take a look at any stock symbols, happy to do that as well. And um, if you have any stocks that you think would be helpful for the group and you would like my opinion on those stocks before the market closes, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'm happy to take a look at them. Please put a star by them so that I know they're time sensitive. If not, I'll just cover them at the end of the day. Uh, if I'm running low on time. All right, so that is the plan. Uh, if you could just hold on, I'm gonna run the US legal disclaimer and I will be back shortly. Thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer
before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okie dokie. I actually had have had a few day trades today. I'm going to go over those with you as well. Uh, I just had to get out. Uh, you probably heard me uh, the ding, and I just had to get out of a trade, and I'll go over that in a second. So let's take a look, see who's here. All right, Evan is here. Good to see you. Hello, Kamal. Nice to see you as well. Jesse, what's up, my brother? Jesse says, hey, Greg and gang, happy Friday to all. Uh, able to listen today during my commute. Fantastic. Thanks for being here, Jess, and be safe there on the road. Hey, Zach, good to see you. Bob, hello. Always nice to have you. Jackson, morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Good morning to you. Hope you're having a good morning. Kamal said uh, Roku was close to hitting 5%. Yes, it was. It definitely was. Zach, loud and clear. Kamal says, I can hear you. Sats, how you doing? Hey, Greg, we can hear you. Great. Jackson said, still obeying my, my plan rules. Not allowed to play in the market the last two days. Glad to hear it. Dan, hello. Good to see you. Um, Dan says, no audio still loading, but I think we're coming through here. Um, Steve Burns, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Always an honor and privilege to have you here, Steve. Always excited to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Steve says the Bears are back in town. Yes, they are in a big, big way. And thank you, by the way, Steve, for including me on your Friday list today. I always appreciate that. Marco is here. Hey, buddy, what's happening? Hope you're having a good evening. Steve says my silver AGQ is the only thing working for me today. Yes. Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh huh. Okay, here we go. Steve bought this here back when we had the 520 EMA cross, and it has moved nicely, nicely up right now. Don't think it got up to 70 RSI yet. Let's take a look where it was at its high. 64.95 roughly, but fantastic trade, Steve. It's nice to have something working today, right? Um. Joe Turner, hey buddy, good to see you. Frank says, oh, here we go. I think we have a poem. They say it's hard to beat the S&P, let alone trade like Mark Minervini. But who are they anyway? Stay focused and study. Be the best you are. And you too can trade like a superstar. Ah, oh, that's great, Frank. They say it's hard to beat the S&P, let alone trade like Mark Minervini. But who are they anyway? Stay focused and study. Be the best you are. You too can trade like a superstar. Ah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Frank, as always, for that. Putting the time and effort into that. That's nice. Okay. And if you don't mind, I'll post that later. Joe. Oh, we have a we have a back-to-back -back poem. Beginner beginners trade the market when it's a mess. Little do they know that it will bring stress. It's like tossing a coin to see where it lands. Sometimes it's best just to see it on your hands. Fantastic, Joe. That's really good. Uncopy that one as well. Let me read that one more time. Beginning, beginners trade the market when it's a mess. Little do they know that it will bring stress. It's like tossing a coin to see where it lands. Sometimes it's best just to see it on your hands. That's good. Wade Foster, hey, hey. Good to see you, Wade. Joe Turner, or Joe liked that one. Frank says, back at you, Joe. Wade says, my gold investment did good today. Yes, gold's kicking butt today. Way to go, Wade. Jackson said, just purchase your audiobook of New Trader, Rich Trader for some light listening after I get through the 10 hours of Man Who Solved the Markets for the Second Time. <laughs> yeah, that one's a little harder reading, isn't it? Uh, Frank and Joe, very, very relevant. Thanks, gentlemen. 100%. 100%. Uh, okay. Well, as much as this is going to be painful, 
let's go through the current trades and we'll see what's happening. All right, first on the list is Facebook. I did buy Facebook back here on uh, this, or, uh, February 14th when the 10 crossed over the 50. Next day it moved up nicely, hit a profit target, which I'm really glad. This you know kind of shows you really if you take a trade, it moves your way, why at the very least, it's nice to have taken a little profit up here in case it rolls over like it did today. At least it mitigates the loss fractionally right but better than nothing uh today the looks like the price is going to close below both the 10 and the 50 which are the two moving averages that i used as the crossover that is going to be my stop today as long as we close under the 50 i will go ahead get out of facebook if you remember i did sell half my position yesterday i didn't like this bar uh, it was a V1 to the downside, larger than 1 ATR, so a bit of a volatility bar. So I used the 50-50 rule. I got out of half of my position here um, because I didn't, like, I didn't like the volatility. But today will be the uh, end point of this trade for me because it looks like it's going to close both below the 10 and the 50. But listen, you know, let's be positive. Try to focus on the on the positive things. And for me, that was I did at least sell half of my position yesterday. Uh, IWM. I did buy IWM back here on the 11th of February when we had the 1050 crossover. Uh, moved up nicely. Did hit a couple profit targets on this, but down today, uh, down about a percent. This one is still holding over the 50-day uh, moving average, so I will be keeping this one. And yesterday's bar was not as negative as Facebook's bar. So, uh, you know, these crossover approaches, they don't always work, obviously, but when they work, they work big, and when they lose, they lose fairly small. So uh, steady as she goes on Russell 2000 because the, today uh, it has not closed below both the 10 and the 50. Okay, Roku. So I did buy Roku yesterday. Um, Kamal bought this, Steve bought this, I bought this. I did like the setup. We bounced at the 200 day moving average. Uh, we tested this previous low. We also rejected the negative one ATR channel, uh, but uh, it's turned into a hot mess today. The buyers at the 200 could not hold it. You can see this line down here, the uh, about 11, seven, uh, uh, 117.50 is my 5% emergency stop. This is a good teaching lesson right here. You know, if it closes below the 200 a day, which I'm almost certain that it will, I'll just go, have to go ahead and get out. That will be my end of day stop. However, I always on every single trade have an emergency 5% stop. I don't wait till the end of the day. If during the, you know, if 10 minutes into the market, it comes down here and hits that, well, that's all for me. I'm not going to wait till the end of the day. Um, and it got, uh, as Kamal said, it got very, very close, uh, didn't quite get there, uh, but uh, I will be taking this off the table here at the end of the day, unless we have a miraculous rally in the next 45 minutes and close back over, which I, I highly doubt. All right. Spy, world famous spy trade. I do mention this each day. Uh, I do mention this each day, but in case we have some new viewers, I do want to explain this trade. I do buy the SPY every single day at the close of the market, and I sell it first thing the next morning, regardless of uh, resistance, regardless of support, regardless of overbought readings, oversold readings, technicals. This is a completely mechanical system. This is a, a back test from Lizanne Saunders. Uh, at Bespoke Invest on Twitter. This is a back test of trading this every day since 1993. Two approaches in this test. First approach, buy the SPY at the open, sell it at the close. So buy in the morning, sell the afternoon. Buy at the open, sell the close, right? If you use this approach every single day from 1993, you'd have returned a negative 13.9% return for all your troubles. However, if you do the opposite, which is what I do, and buy the SPY at the close every day, sell first thing the next open. So buy the, you know, buy the close, sell the next open, buy the close, you know, sell the next morning using this approach every day since 1993 you've actually returned a 634.2 percent return so buying at the open and selling at the close every day 
negative 13.9%, buying at the close, selling the next morning, 634.2%. So past performance is no guarantee of future results. That is true, but if I'm gonna allocate money and capital towards something, I would rather allocate it towards something that has a good track record. You can see it does not always go straight up. It has big drawdowns and we have to be prepared for those, right? But over time, it has had a nice equity curve, especially compared to doing the opposite of buying in the morning, selling at the close, horrible return. So uh, that being said, I did buy the SPY yesterday at the close at 336.95. I did sell it at the open at 335.41. So uh, pretty good, pretty good overnight loss on this, but you know, looking glass half full, the market is down much, much deeper than where I sold it. So I have to be thankful for that. Uh, we are coming back into the value zone. You know, up here, everything is so good. Everything seems so bullish. You know, I mention this all the time when this happens, but time after time after time, you're, you're really better waiting for it to at least come into the value zone. Anything over the green line here, the one ATR, I considered overvalued and overvalued things come to tend, tend to come back into value. The values between the one and the negative one ATR channel, that's just one standard deviation away from the 20 day um, simple moving average. And if you're gonna buy something, much better to buy it here in value or under value. So we've poked our head back into value. We're kind of coming back down to earth uh, as I kind of expected, you know, just because I've been doing this for so many years. When we start getting up here, especially near the third ATR channel, it's generally about it. You know, not all the time, but more times than not. So we are back in the value zone. Um, I would be looking for some sideways movement. I mean, we, you know, we went down yesterday. We went down again today. We may go down Monday, but I want to start to see this um, uh, kind of consolidate, kind of calm down, see that there are some buyers that are coming in. So uh, anyway, I will be buying the SPY like I do every day at the close of the market here, and then I'll be selling it first thing Monday morning. Okay, well, AT&T is at least hanging in there today. Uh, I did buy this back on the 13th of February when we had a higher low V1. Higher low V1 is when we close below the negative one ATR channel. We come back into the value zone. We have a couple days down, and then we have a V1 entry. Here is day one, here is day two. Uh, day two washes out day one, closes above day one's close. It's basically moved sideways. Uh, a couple days ago, it, it went up, hit a profit target, went up yesterday as well. Today we're down, uh, but uh, really no harm, no foul on this one. We're still up on the trade. MACD is still positive. Bing He Gamer have this trade as well, I believe. So, uh, you know, the plan with this is this orange line up here on AT&T. Uh, this is the one eight. Uh, is a distance of one ATR away from my entry. I have to have it move at least one ATR away from my entry before I start using a trailing stop. Until it gets there, I use my initial stop, which is halfway of this washout bar. So anyway, down 14 cents is all today, but uh, happy for that uh, after, after the drubbing everything else is taken. Okay. Uh, last normal trade, I did buy XLE back here on the 19th of February. We had a higher low V2. Here is day one, day two, day three. Day two washed out day one, then day three closed above day one's close. Higher low, which is always best. Went up yesterday. Fortunate that we took one profit or that I took one profit target off yesterday. Uh, my It has not hit more than one ATR for my entry, so there is no trailing stop. So if it can close, we're right on the right on the bubble here. Halfway of the washout bar is my, close below halfway of the washout bar is my end of day stop. You can see we're hanging right there. Uh, so this uh, now we're right about even. So if this closes underneath, I'm going to have to go ahead and just get out of there as well. Okay. On to day trades. 
I have been doing this lately. I do like to show you that these trades do work on multiple time frames, not just one time frame. Okay, finally, profitable trade. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a, these are five minute charts on Apple. Uh, you can see I bought this higher low V1, also a bullish engulfing bar, also rejected the negative one ATR channel and look, you know, very close to a double bottom with the bullish diversion. So uh, I did buy this at the end of the bar on Apple at 316.42. The blue line up here was the 50 RSI. So I didn't scale, I just, this, this is one entry, one exit. It's a little hard to scale on, on Apple when you've got a bunch of things to do. So uh, move nicely, move nicely up, rejected the 50 and I got out. So I did get in at 316.42 and I got out at 317.10. So about 70 cents in five minutes. So that was pretty good and then I did get out which was a good idea because we have just gone down and down and down and down. I did take another trade. That, my second trade in Apple was here. Uh, we went, let me put this up here a little bit for you. This is a good confluence of indicators here. Uh, we had a bullish engulfing bar from the previous bar. We went under 30, over 30. We went under the negative third ATR channel, over the third ATR channel. We also had this previous low of this range here. We also closed above that, making this a false breakout to the downside with the bullish engulfing bar, uh, with a rejection of the 30 RSI, uh, and a rejection of the third ATR channel. The orange line up here is when I got one ATR away from my entry. I did not phase on this uh, either. It got up there. As soon as it happened to get up there, I'm looking for a close below the previous bars low, and that happened right here. So, uh, slight profit, right? Better than nothing. Um, but uh, so two profitable trades on Apple. So I'm 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 grateful for that at least. That's for sure. Okay, uh, last trade was on the VIX intraday VXX. Okay. You see all this sideways movement we have here? Lots of sideways movement. I did buy after we had the sideways consolidation that it stabbed down, reversed back up. I bought here at 1468. Orange line is one ATR away from my entry. As soon as I have that, I start to trail. Well, it moved nicely. I was like, this is great. Moved up, went back. As soon as I get above this one ATR from my entry, I had, I, my trailing stop is a close below the previous day's low. And I had to get out here basically exactly a scratch trade. And then it just kept moving up. But you know, it's, it's, good to see it happens a lot you know but if you can take a scratch trade meaning that you have a trade that is just a break even trade it's a sign of maturity in in your trading it's it's hard for a lot of people to do but you know obviously i wish i would have scaled out here again this is one of the reasons i like to scale because if it does give you something but like i said it's a little tough to do all the math and everything with five minute bars so i just decided to go ahead and uh, work on my one entry one exits but ended up with the uh ended up with a uh, break-even trade on that. So, all right, well, that's it. So um, three day trades, two, one nicely positive, one barely positive, and one break-even. So I'll, I'll take that anytime. Uh, okay, let's move on and see. I wanna congratulate Jesse. Jesse made 104% on his trade on Spice or uh, Space. Virgin Galactic. So he got out yesterday at the close. Didn't like that close being below the open and the rejection of the six ATR channel down 10% today. So that was a good exit, but congratulations, Jess, really proud of you, my friend. Um, hard, hard to get into the, uh, double your money club on any trade and Jesse did it. So congrats. All right, Zach and Amon solo. Uh, are here in Luckin Coffee. They took this higher low V2. 
It's moved up nicely, 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 nicely. Definitely above one ATR or one uh, ATR from your entry. Uh, down a little bit today. Doesn't look like it's closing below the previous day's low, at least not yet. So um, if you have any changes to this, let me know. But glad to see uh, both of you are still profitable in that trade. Uh, Murat bought uh, NOK way back here on the 7th of January at 395. It is 416, so he's still up nicely. We moved up to the third ATR channel, danger zone up there. We have come back down into the value zone. Uh, we have one day sideways movement. So if it can do, continue to move sideways another day and had a nice V1, V2, uh, that's where I would enter. Uh, I'm on solo, uh, bought this nice kind of momentum breakout of this range plus the bounce off the, the 200 day moving average. Next day went cruising on up. Uh, was up again a little bit yesterday. Today it's a little down. So Monsolo, if you have, if you're listening and you have any uh, changes in this trade, please let me know. Uh, Bing He, Bing He did by MAS Masco Corporation yesterday uh, with this rejection of the negative third ATR channel and the V1 uh, down slightly today. Looks like it's holding halfway of the bar. So Bing He, if you have any changes there, please let me know. Uh, ooh, okay, so Ralph Lauren, uh, Bing He did take this yesterday. Um, we made we were above the value zone, we came into the value zone, we bounced up, made a lower high, then we need to wash out the previous low, which it did. But today it just gave up the ghost. And uh, you know, if I was trading this halfway, the washout bar would have been my stop. This is clearly below. You know, when you have a losing trade, and you know, I would definitely be getting out of this, looks like it's close to a 5% loss, but when you have a losing trade like this, uh, you know, take a look at it with the fine tooth comb and say, you know, analyze it objectively and say, you know, was there any, were there any red flags here at all to take this trade? And, you know, honestly, I, as you know, I don't like to buy this high up against the one ATR channel. Right about three quarters is about my limit. So, yeah, you know, if I looked back on this trade, if I was in this trade like Bing He, I, I probably would note that, mm, you know, it was right at the one ATR channel and you start having resistance there. That's why I tend not to buy here on, on, on uh, return to values. Um, crossover trade, yes, I'll give it up to the second ATR, but uh, anyway, just something to keep in mind when you have a losing trade, look back at it and say, hmm, you know, was it really a, a good setup? Were there some warning signs? Um, you know, to me, when I first saw this, I was like, right there at the 1ATR channel. It doesn't mean it's going to go down. I mean, today is kind of a, an anomaly day, uh, but just something to keep in mind. Okay. Okay, listen, uh, I am going to get to all your comments and questions. We'll take a look at stock symbols. Uh, but before I get to there, just want to quickly uh, spend a few minutes on trader psychology. This is the time of the day where I do like to uh, go through Facebook and Twitter and find some good trading words of wisdom that I think will be helpful for you in the group. Um, uh, this is Rainer Teo at Rainer underscore Teo on Twitter. He has a great Twitter channel. He posts really good information. Um, but when I read this, I thought it was very helpful. But Rainer says, remember these lessons. Potential loss is more important than how much you can make, right? 100%. You know, of course we want to make money, but the first priority always, always, always is capital preservation. So the potential loss is always more important than how much you can make. So focus on the loss, not how much you can make. Number two, no matter how sure you are, things can go wrong, 100%. No matter how good the setup is, no matter how great it is, it doesn't mean anything. It's just one trade of the next thousand trades. Something can happen, coronavirus, et cetera, you know, er, political issues with Iran, uh, or just the market's in a selling mood that day. So, you know, don't go, oh, this is a greatest setup. It has everything. I'm going to double or triple up on that. Just go, okay, it's a good setup. Take your normal position size, put it on. It's going to win or lose. And just again, look for the next position size. Good outcome doesn't mean it's the right choice. 
So what Rainer means here is, look, you can take a horrible setup and it could be a great outcome, but it doesn't mean it was the right choice, right? You can go to Vegas and spin that little wheel thing uh, when you walk in the casino and put a dollar on 40 to one and hit it. Uh, it was a good outcome, but is it a good bet? Absolutely not. You know, you, you do that thing a hundred times, you're going to lose like 99% of the time, but you just got lucky. So keep that in mind, just because you had a good trade on something, a profitable trade on a bad setup, doesn't mean it's the right choice. Bad outcome doesn't mean it's the wrong choice. Okay. So listen, you know, Steve's trade and my trade and Kamal's trade on Roku was about a bad outcome, but it doesn't mean it was the wrong choice. It was a good setup. Bounced, it bounced off the 200 day, had a bullish, uh, had a bullish divergence, um, bounced off the negative one ATR channel. And, uh, so, you know, it was a, the, it was a good trading choice, just a bad outcome compared to you can have a good outcome with a bad trading choice or a bad outcome with a good trading choice. So don't let that, you know, affect you just always just, especially if you make a bad trade, it makes a lot of money. Don't start thinking, oh, I'm going to take another one of these, right? And if you risk small, nothing can destroy you. Probably my favorite thing. If you position size correctly, like Rainer Teo says here, nothing can destroy you. Just as long as you position size. It's, it's to me, most important thing. Uh, the only thing that you have control over, two things you have control over, what your position size is and when you enter the trade. After that, you really have no control. Something can happen overnight. You just never know. But uh, if you risk them all, nothing can destroy you. If nothing can destroy you, you're going to stay in the game and you're going to trade for a long time. You're going to get experience. You're going to become a better trader. But if you use a, 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 a large position size and you run into a bad patch of trading, like right off the bat, or you just you know run into a huge drawdown and you blow up your account, how are you ever going to become a good trader? If you don't have the experience, you're not going to have experience. These are going to get it washed out and blow up your account. So anyway, thank you, Rainer Teo. I, I hope this helps everyone, but this, there's a lot of wisdom and knowledge. One, two, three, four, five in these five sentences. So Rainer Teo at Rainer underscore Teo. Okay. And then look, lastly, before I get to lastly before i get to uh the questions and everything i listened to a podcast from jim rome yesterday somebody sent it to me he was interviewing a uh, performance coach you know psychology performance coach this guy works with you know some of the most famous athletes out there um oh okay let's see so that's not gonna work. Let's see. I tried to post the link, but it's not letting me. But if you if you scroll up to the very very top of the live chat, I did post the link. It's not letting me post the link again for some reason. Um, but it was a great interview. Whether you're a sports person or a trading person, of course, I was listening to it through a trading year, and it was so spot on. But you know, kind of the big part of it is not not thinking, not so much trying to be positive all the time, but just trying not to be negative, trying to be neutral, right? And when it comes to trading, uh, you know, he said, if you say it out loud, it has a huge difference, 40 to 70 times different than if you just say it in your head. But, you know, the point is, you know, you don't have to be positive all the time. Just try not to have negative thoughts. And if you listen to that podcast, you know, he'll explain kind of the science behind it and some of the numbers behind it. But anyway, I thought that was helpful. Okay. Now, as far as possible trades today, I honestly do not see anything. Uh, the Dow, uh, you know, I do like this convergence of the 50 day moving average and the negative one ATR channel. If we could bounce off that, get a V1 off of that, something like that, that might be interesting. Uh, Google, you know, back in the value zone, which is important, but we need to see that move sideways. Bonds, I mean, boy, you know, the bond market is always known for sniffing out issues in the economy and people have been rushing into bonds. 
So nothing there. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, I did see Johnson and Johnson today. So listen, this is obviously a V2. Here's day one, small day one bar, which is good. Nice washout. Today did go and close above day one's close. We have a nice V2, but the problem is we came into the value zone, but we still have not had any sideways movement. Just down, 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 bounce. And when you have down, 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 down bounces, yeah, it might go up for another day or two, but these usually come back down. The better ones are if they come up in the value zone, come into or above the value zone, come into the value zone, move sideways nicely, 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 and then have a V1 or a V2. If you have that sideways movement, you're much more likely to be able to sustain an upward move. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a quick look here at current positions. So while I'm thinking about it, of course, Facebook is out of there. Very thankful that I sold half yesterday. I mean, this is not, you know, rainbows and butterflies, but, you know, trying to keep it positive. Uh, glad sold half yesterday. So I am definitely going to be getting out of Facebook. IWM it looks like it is still holding the 50. It looks like the IWM is the strongest index today. Roku, definitely going to be letting this go at the end of the day. Spy, buying that again at the end of the day. AT&T is hanging in there. It's fine. XLE is right on the button for me. So this one, $53.99. I'm going to have to... XLE, $53.99. So make a note for myself so I can see that. So if this closes under this, you know, no real magic about the halfway. I mean, I, I, I do, it's helpful for sure. You know, from a Fibonacci standpoint, it does tend to help. But the main thing is that you have, you just have some marker, you have some line in the sand. I mean, it should be based upon something like Fibonacci. But, you know, if it closes one penny above, does it mean that it's going to go skyrocketing Monday? 100% no, right? But you just, you have to have a landmark. You have to have a line in the sand, you know, red light underneath, green light above, and, and that's it. Okay. So I had the two day trades on Apple. I'm going to get rid of these lines to clear things up here. Interesting possible V2 right there, right now. See? Well, it'd have to close above, but high or low, below the 1ATR channel, into the value zone, down, definitely a couple days down. Day one, or bar one, bar two washes out bar one, and here, if it closes above day one's close, that would be a valid five-day intraday bar uh, higher trade on Apple. And it looks like the market is seeing this as well. But uh, let's watch that. I don't think I'm going to trade this just, you know, because uh, I can't pay attention to it. Uh, but uh, all right, one second. So that that bar is that bar is did confirm stop would be halfway of the washout bar as so and the only thing that I would put up here is a one ATR move for my entry which would be 37 cents so let's just we'll take a look at this later and see how it does But I'm not taking this for real. Although I wish I would have right now. <laughs> right? All right. We'll we'll check back on that. Okay. Steve says, I look forward to, to these poems every day. Thank you for sharing. I agree. 
Steve says, The Man Who Solved the Markets is one of my all-time favorite trading books out of hundreds of, of reads. Yes, I like that one a lot. Steve Burns, I tried to absorb as much as I could the first time, but it has gone, but it has some wonderful hints in it. So it is a study run. I really love it. I find it inspiring. Joe says, that's supposed to read, sit on your hands, not see it. You know, Joe, when I read that, I thought, you know, sit on your hands might be, uh, sit on your hands might uh, sound good as well. So you just mistyped it. Okay, good. Steve says, uh, Q volume on these last two days is huge. Looks like the be beginning of distribution. Yeah, I mean, every single, uh, you know, little rally we've had intraday has been sold into. What does distribution mean? Uh, Zach, it means that uh, people are not buying the dips anymore. They're selling the rallies. It means they're wanting to get out. They want to distribute the stock that they have. Jackson said, I trade Q, Steve, and rules don't permit, permit me to get in the last two years. I can feel the pain in these bars. There's a lot of pain in these bars. Being he, hey, buddy, good to see you. Jackson says, Zach, Chuck, distribution into Investopedia. Good little resource. Should be first hit. Okay, Joe says, oh, redid the poem. All right. All right. Good. Glenn, hey, Grant, uh, hey Greg, my indicators are now on sell. So adding to bonds and gold, we'll look to switch back in equities in one to two weeks. Well, fantastic trade on gold, bud. Really, really nice. Uh, Jack, uh, Steve says, Jackson, your system signal worked out very well. Hey, Andrea, good to see you. Always nice to have you here. Looking for our lesson. Looking forward to our lesson tonight, Andrea. So I will talk to you in person a little later. Uh, Glenn says, looking for a test of the 50 EMA on S&P. Yep, very likely it will uh, bring in some buyers there. Distribution is when sellers overwhelm buyers and push prices down, looking for, for where the buyers will step in and trade with them. Yes. Accumulation is when people buy and hold. Distribution is where a large amount of people want to lock in profits and create short-term tops. Being he, got to cut loose RL. Grateful that out of three position only needed to cut one loss. Yes. All right. So let's get rid of this for being he. Take a look at our little Apple trade so far. So far, so good. We got in there about 311.55, already 40 cents. So if it gets, you know, this is the first live trade we've seen live or the intraday trade that we see live, but we took the V2, right? The higher low V2, it's moved up nicely. Um, if it gets over this one ATR, or if it moves up at least one ATR from my entry, that's when I'm going to trail it, trail stop. But I also have to look and see if it's going to reject the 50 RSI, and it's not there yet. So that's kind of fun. Uh, Kamal says, Bing He, check what happened to RPD. Should we take a look? RPD. Okay. Good that you got out. Good that you got out. You know, you obeyed your stop with the under the 200. Bing He says, Kamal, I saw it. Lucky we exited. Yes, sir. Hey, Muhammad, nice to see you, sir. Appreciate you coming. Hi, Greg. Hi, fellow traders. Jackson says, thanks, uh, Steve Burns. I feel, I, I feel playing offense is much better than looking at the small profits you miss over time uh, because when things fall, they fall hard. Yes, they do. Greg, I'm using EMA for the ATR channels. Uh, it is not too high for RL, thus I took the trade. Okay. Yeah, you can use, you can use EMAs for ATR channel. Uh, I use SMAs, but... You know, just stick with something, uh, whether, you know, whether it's EMA or SMA. 
Being he, I missed my entry on RGLD on February 18th and was trying to enter the next day, but again, it was skipped when I queued on market open. I tried my best. Don't be too hard on myself. Very good. That's true. Uh, Being he says, I only see GSK, but not much confluence of signals. Well, if it closes over 30, you at least you would have an under 30, over 30, and a rejection of the 200-day. That wouldn't be too bad. Let's look at the weekly. Um, you know, straight down on the weekly, but we do have that 50-week moving average down there on GSK. So I'd like it better if it had already tested that. Anyway, let me know if you do anything with uh, GSK. I'm actually going to put that there. Uh, Jackson says, always a good day being he when you don't lose money, so you definitely shouldn't be too hard on yourself. True. Evan says, NLC, thoughts? Well, it it's it's a v1 here today here's day one here's day two um you know you can't have a v1 and a v2 but you can have a v technically but you can have both this is a okay v1 it didn't wash out very well this is a better v2 but this bar is a lot little larger than one atr and we got very close to rejecting the 50 RSI already. It's not bad. Let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly has bounced off the 20 week moving average several times. So that's pretty good. Um, I mean, it's up on a down day, which is always positive. Yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, it's it's definitely okay. If I took this, I would use right about halfway of this washout bar right here. Um, no, you know what? I take that back. I would use I would base this on the V2. Here's day one, day two, day three. Halfway of the washout bar dovetails nicely where the 50 moving average was. So I would if I took this trade, I'd, I'd give it down to about 360 to 70 as my stop. Kamal says XLE fifty four ten. Is it is this the halfway? Um. Well, I have the halfway here at about fifty three ninety nine. I mean, I'm not getting my protractor out and you know i'm just kind of eyeing it right here um 5410 yeah that it could let's see 5410 i don't know to my eye that looks a little higher than halfway i'm gonna stick i'm gonna stick with my 54 53.99 ah 54 let's call it 50 that's about right about halfway right greg did spice just hit a v1 on the five minute uh it did back here definitely a v1 with a bullish engulfing bar as well Let's take a look at our little Apple trade, see how we would have done. Dang, I guess I should have taken that trade, huh? <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's definitely above the one ATR channel, uh, larger than one move for my entry. Uh, so now we'd get into trailing stop mo mode or a loss of the 50 RSI. Dang, I should have taken that trade. <laughs> but again, right, higher low V2, uh, and it just motored on up. Great trade. Did anybody take that? Uh, 
Glenn says, GSX still holding from 40, looking to add if pullback to 10. Oh, yeah, we talked about that yesterday, I think, right, Glenn? Right, yep, we did. Murat, hey, good to see you, my friend. Hey, Greg and all, Nokia is, va in, is in the value zone. Yeah, I talked about that a little earlier. It is back in the value zone. But for me, it's in the value zone, but I need a trigger first. Boy, look at this five minute Apple trade. Son of a gun. Look at this trade, everybody, right? But again, Closed below the 1ATR channel, came back into the value zone, definitely had a couple days down. Here we had some sideways movements, not required, but it is pretty good. Then we had the sweet V2, moved up further than 1ATR for my entry. Now it's in trailing stop mode. If it would have rejected the 50, I would have also gotten out. Look at this thing, motor on up. Now, if I was in this intraday trade, I would get out with a rejection of that 55 minute downward sloping bar here on Apple. Okay, well, that's the one that got away, huh? All right, let me do a quick follow up here and see what's happening. Uh, well, I guess Facebook, maybe, possibly holding over the 50. I don't know. IWM, definitely fine. Roku is a goner for sure. Spy grabbing that at the end of the day. AT&T, only down nine cents now, fantastic. XLE, definitely, well, at the moment, looks like it's holding. And then here's this, uh, you could have taken this intraday trade here on Virgin Galactic with this higher low V1 bullish engulfing bar. Interesting. Jackson says, Greg, do you take more day trades now or have you always taken these but more recently talked about them? No, I have not. I have not taken a lot of day trades. I, I decided to take some day trades here. One, because the market's been volatile and you kind of need that if you're going to be a day trader. And two, I, you know, I wanted to show examples that, you know, higher low V1s, return to value V1s, deep dip buys, all the, all the approaches that I use also work on other time frames other than just the daily or the weekly that they do work intraday you know good good trading approaches will work on any market any time frame so i just thought it would be helpful for everyone uh to kind of see it in real time uh or well maybe not real time but uh look at this okay so if i'd have taken this if i'd have taken this trade right here with this v1 here v2 here i would definitely be getting out if it closes and it did, this is where I would have gotten out right here. So there's a real trade, right? You guys saw that happen in real time. So higher low V2, bump, 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 bump. Rejected the 50, that would be my stop. Boy, that would have been 311.55 up to 313. <laughs> it's like one and three quarters points in five, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So Facebook, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on Facebook now. And over here. Okay. IWM is fine. Roku, that's going to sell at the end of the day. Spy, picking that up again here. 
XLE looks like it's a keeper. Apple. I mean, no trade on Apple here, but looks like it's rejecting the negative one ATR channel, so that's good. All right. Okay. Jackson says, Merci. Yes, and live gives people a feel of what's going on instead of always waiting for the swing trades to flesh out over a few days. Yeah, I 100% agree. Because, you, you know, you see it quicker in real time. And by the way, you know, if it's not a bad idea to sit in front of your computer on a one minute chart or five minute chart and see these patterns uh, happen and see how they play out. TRV. It's, it's really not bad, Bob. Uh, it is a nice higher low V2 with the rejection of the negative one ATR channel. I'm a little concerned about this huge band of moving averages right here. You are definitely going to have some resistance right there and the 50 RSI. So right about here, you're going to have the confluence of all these moving averages and a 50 RSI. Me personally, I probably would not take that trade. Being he says, Greg, I think V1s, V2s do not work well on Singapore and Hong Kong stocks. I am not too sure, but I failed quite a few times on them. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of nuances to V1s and V2s. You know, do you have sideways movements? Are they in the right place of the chart? Are they in the value zone? Have you had two days down? Uh, but with any, with any trading approach, the bigger the stocks, the more people are watching them, the better. So, you know, using them, uh, using them on Singapore stocks that maybe don't have a lot of following like an Apple, you know, or something here in the United States. Uh, yeah, it probably won't work as well, but probably any indicator probably won't work as well. Dr. Jorgensen, good to see you, buddy. Back from uh, Malaysia. Good hike. Good weekend. Talk to you then. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. All right. So we have one minute left. Yeah, right there, Apple with the rejection of that 50. So that seemed to be the, the right place to get out. Okay. XLE looks like it's holding. Facebook I already got out of. Roku selling at the close. Oh, it looks like we have a little selling coming in here at the end. Okay, we have about 10 seconds. So the only thing I'm buying today is overnight spy. Got out of Facebook, got out of Roku, keeping XLE, keeping AT&T. There we go. Okay, so Facebook, ah, this was a bummer. You know, it was nice to have this big gain, but this bar was pretty gnarly yesterday, volatility bar. So I did take half off here, and here's my normal stop with the close below the, the 10 and the 50. So I am out of Facebook. IWM is fine. Roku, that was a whooping, huh? <laughs> Come on, Steve. <laughs> we all got we all got in on that fun. But again, I would take the trade again. Rejection of the 200-day moving average, rejection of the negative one ATR channel. Have a, uh, so yeah, yesterday it was a bullish divergence. Now it's a convergence. So that's that's not good. So Roku is out of there. Spy, 
333.48. That's the overnighter. Okay. AT&T is fine, held in there like a champion. XLE did hold above the stop. Apple is out of there. And VIX closed above the 50 uh, RSI and closed above the 50 day moving average. So pretty strong on old VIXie there. All right. Listen, you know, when you have down days, don't let it affect you. You know, you're going to have up days coming in the future. You know, if you trade for years and years and years, you're going to have a lot, a lot of up days. And your up days probably will be bigger than your down days. This has been crazy market lately. I mean, this has been crazy with the coronavirus and all these news stories. So uh, just take it, let, you know, let, the, let it just slide off your back. If you position size correctly, you didn't get hurt that bad today, right? The key, that's the key. So, okay. Muhammad says, Greg, I see that you color your bars like Elder's Impulse. So do you follow the Impulse Sensor uh, guidance? Uh, you know, it's a good, that's a good uh, question, Muhammad. Um, I do know Dr. Elder. I actually studied with him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I don't follow it exactly like Dr. Elder has, but I do have Impulse on here. That's why you see these bars being green and blue and red. Uh, I mean, I do, I do keep these things in mind, um, but I'll, I'll have to talk about the impulse system when I have a little bit more time. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I do have my bars configured to show impulse. Essentially, Dr. Elder will only buy something if it's blue or green on both time frames. Um, you know, if one time frame's red and the other one's green, he won't buy it. Uh, if one's red and it's blue, he won't buy it. But I'll talk about this another time. But um, uh, I mean, listen, if I have two, if I have two stocks that I'm looking at, and one has blue on the weekly and blue on the daily, uh, I would take that over one that has red and red, everything being equal. Kamal is out of Roku. Bob says, look at STMP. Holy cow. STMP. Holy cow. Is right. Wow. Wow, wow. Well, I guess their earnings were pretty good, huh? Look at this base it built. Look at this sideways base. You know, this is a good example of moving sideways. Tends to either break out this way or break out that way you just never know what direction or when it's going to happen but wow unbelievable huh bob zach's out of lk yeah i figured you were oops oh oh no sorry wrong trade so zach is out of lk all right zach we got you off there so that leaves amon All right, hey, just real quick, I wanna put in my daily plug, let everybody know that I do offer private one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring and teaching lessons in the evening time via Skype. Uh, I do like to teach, I really love it. Um, I've had really good success with my clients. You know, I take it really seriously when I teach lessons and I do have a course, uh, five sessions, each session somewhere between two and three hours. Uh, I teach you everything I've learned. Uh, over the last 24 years as a full-time trader, everything I've learned from my coaches like our friend Steve Burns, uh, Dr. Alexander Elder, who I just uh, discussed, uh, Kerry Lavorn, uh, V1, V2 guy that I learned V1, V2s from, and then Larry Williams. Uh, so I teach you everything that I've learned from all of those, plus everything I've developed over the years. Uh, the course is $1,000. I try to make it affordable. I think it's worth every penny. Uh, the format of the lessons, the first part of the lessons, I teach you a concept. Second part of the lesson, the second half of the lesson, I ask you questions. 
Uh, you have to teach it back to me. We do a lot of chart study. I just want to really make sure that you understand it till, uh, before we move on to the next lesson. But I know if you take this course, you will definitely be a better trader. You will make more money and you will lose less money when you're losing. And so if you've been thinking about it, please reach out to me. I do like to have just a free 30 minute Skype call, 30, 40 minute Skype call with the new potential student. Um, uh, to learn more about them and their trading and their goals and their frustrations they've had with trading and you know then you can ask me anything you like there uh, there is 100% no obligation whatsoever um, uh, for the Skype call I mean really at all I'm just trying to see if we're gonna be a good fit for each other if our schedules fit for each other so forth and so on and if you don't want to take the course it's totally fine you know it's nice to talk to you anyway so if you're interested um, in having that free Skype call please reach out to me my email is in the description of this video or you can also send me a message on Twitter Twitter yeah I always get Twitter and Skype mixed up so you can send me a message on on Twitter. Uh, and then if you like today's uh, podcast, if you're learning something uh, useful from this channel, I really would appreciate before you head out of here, uh, if you wouldn't mind just taking a half a second and hitting that little like button down there before you roll on out of here. Uh, it helps build the channel. It helps YouTube know that, you know, it's uh, a channel that has some value and so forth. So if you could hit that uh, before you get out of here, it would really be nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Jackson says, and thumbs up on the channel, peeps. Thank you, Jackson. Well, what was the damage today? So Dow Jones down 227. NASDAQ down 174. That's a big down day on the NASDAQ, 1.79%. S&P right about 1.05%. Yeah, that was a couple days, wasn't it? Look at these last couple days. Boom, boom. You know, I imagine it's likely that we should start to find some buyers back here in the value zone. People that were short up here most likely will be looking to buy and cover their positions right here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a bounce here coming in the next, next week sometime. But first thing, you know, we've been down, we've been down. If we go down again the next day, uh, shows that the selling's not over, right? We want to see this stabilize. We want to see it start moving sideways. We want to see some buyers come in and start building a little bit of a foundation to possibly move back up. Well, if anybody has any other questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Because um, after that, I'm going to put on my hiking boots, head on out. It has been cold here, super cold. Not Jesse cold. Jesse sent me a picture yesterday in Minnesota, 30 below zero. So I can't compete with that, but it's been cold for me, for sure, because it's been cold and it's been super, super windy. Let's see. Had a couple great poems there from Frank and Joe. And by the way, I did put the, the very, very top of the live chat, I did put that link to that Jim Rome interview with that performance coach, and it was really good. I mean, it was seriously good, you know, talking about some of the most famous athletes that he works with and so forth. But the takeaway, you don't always have to be super positive. You just have to be very careful about thinking and saying negative things. 
Uh, and a lot of, you know, a lot of people, a lot of us do it without even realizing it, but he kind of showed the importance of trying, of, of not doing that. Okay, I think, I think I've gone through all these here. Kamal says, thank you, Greg. Have a good weekend. You too, Kamal. Thank you. And uh, get me get with me when we're ready for our next lesson, would you? Dan says, thank you, Greg. Good day. Thank you, Dan. Jackson says, I'm off for a walk, but thank you, Greg. Much appreciate again. Appreciate your kindness and generosity to do this for us uh, here. Safe weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon, huh, Jackson? Zach says, thank you. Thank you, Zach. Mohammed, thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. Joe says, thanks, Greg. See you. See you, Joe. Okay, last chance for questions or for jokes. Greg, for your next trade with one entry, one exit, do you think it is better to have a profit target rather than waiting for a trailing stop? Uh, you know, it, it depends being he on, on some people some people just have a profit target and that's it and that's fine. Uh, other people um, just have trailing stops. You know, if you have a trailing stop, then you, you know, you're going to always give back some profit. Whereas if you just had a target, you would hit that, take it and get out. Uh, but there's pluses and minuses to everything because if you, if you have a profit target and you get out, but your trailing stop didn't get you out, then it can, you know, you doesn't happen very often, but you can have a huge trade waiting for that, waiting for that uh, profit or that trailing stop to kick in. I mean, let's take Apple, for example. Let's take that five minute trade that uh, you saw here on Apple. You know, and I guess the way I trade, being he, is kind of a combination of both, right? If we would have gotten in here on this V2, once it moved one ATR for my entry, I would use a trailing stop. But my, do you see how it rejected the 50-day moving average? So in a sense, that was my profit target. I didn't have to wait for a close below the previous day's low because it rejected a profit target above me. Does that, does that make sense, being he? You know, sometimes you'll get in, it will go up and then you'll have a trailing stop and you have to get out and you would have had more if you would have not waited for the trailing stop. But you know, the way I trade, I have trailing stops if it moves against me, but I also have profit targets that if they get rejected the upside, I get out. Does that make sense, Bing Hee? I think the real answer, Bing Hee, it really depends on your personality and what what feels more comfortable and sustainable for you. You know, if you really hate having to give back money, uh, then, uh, I mean, you know, if that destabilizes you any, any way, shape or form, then maybe use, uh, maybe use a, a profit target and you'll feel better about it. But, how I trade, it's kind of a combination of both. If it goes back down without hitting my profit target, I get out. If it rejects the profit target to the upside, I also get out. And this, this five minute chart here, this trade right here is a perfect, perfect example of that. Being he says, yes, just that one target is very simple to trade. It is, it is. And trading should be simple. If, if, if you have too many variables and you feel like it's not simple enough for you, then sure, you know, sure. Maybe just use one profit target.
Okay, well listen, let me just leave you off with two things. One, please go out, try to do something nice for somebody today. Just a smile or a wave or a hold the door open or uh, just something, right? Just one little gesture each day to someone that you know or you don't know really could have a huge dramatic effect on that person's day going forward. And it doesn't take a lot of energy and it doesn't take a lot of effort and it's free. Just being pleasant or smiling or have a good saying hello, have a good day, uh, really could make a big difference. So um, please try to do that each day, uh, either to a person or animal or both, even better both. And uh, secondly, again, um, on your way out here, if you haven't hit the thumbs up button and you did like today's podcast and you found it helpful, I really would appreciate if you could just click that before you head out. So Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Nice having you here as always. I really look forward to it. I hope you have a good weekend, safe weekend. Um, and uh, I just want to let you know one more time at the top of the chat here, I have that link to that Jim Rohn interview with that performance coach was really good for trading, for sports, for business, for anything. And uh, I mean, I know what you're thinking you're like, yeah, I've heard stuff like that before. But when I listened to it, I was like, this is this stuff is really good. So it's just at the top, the very top of the chat. If you scroll up there, you can grab that link. So, all right, everybody, that's it. Have a good weekend. Hope to see you Monday uh, during the final hour of the trading day. Take care now. Bye-bye. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. U.S. Government Required Disclaimer Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind, which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit no representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.